Hi, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on September 28th. It is the League of Legends Worlds 2002-2022 Worlds Tournament Time. I am excited to be joined by you guys um, to talk about League of Legends' biggest Worlds Tournament that will be taking place in the North America, mainly, um, in Mexico City for the play-in stage that we'll talk about um, for the next couple weeks. And the main tournament, um, the group stage, and the semifinals, and the finals will be happening in New York City, Chicago. Uh, Chicago? No, New York City, Atlanta, and somewhere in California, I believe in San Francisco. So, anywho, anywho I'm excited. If you can't tell, uh, you know, this is the most exciting time of the year. If you are an esports fan, especially a League of Legends fan, this is where all esports fans around the world come together and watch probably the best League of Legends players. Um, and the world compete for the Summoner's Cup, the ultimate trophy, um, and to try to reach the summit of the League of Legends esports annually. So it is a very exciting time of the year. Um, I am excited. Um, I just want to kind of point out the basics. Um, for those of you who may not know me, um, my name is DFS Chan. I produce a lot of the League of Legends videos um, thanks to True DFS, who has been sponsoring my videos um, for League of Legends contents, especially for those who those of you who play DFS, daily fantasy sports, um, but also any straight up match predictions and bettings um, that you can do on esports games including League of Legends. Um, so I'm excited to share what I think will likely happen based on my research, based on my eye test, based on the trends um, and the form that these players and these teams are playing in um, and the matchups. So that's something I do um, for a lot of League of, League of Legends league and regions leagues and regions and matchups so i plan to the last thing i'll say about this is I'll, i plan to make as many videos as possible um for slates for those of you who most of you guys who watch this are dfs players daily fantasy sports players so i will try to make this a daily thing um but obviously my outlook for the playing stage and then the group stage um, when that time comes in a couple of weeks. Um, my outlooks will be very similar um, and, you know, they will be a key factor to uh, determine who my match, you know, match winners, um, match winning predictions will be. Um, unless, you know, I watch these games and I see some teams, you know, that I completely got wrong um, before the stage begins or they they're just in terrible ter terrific form versus terrible form which will sway my decisions throughout this group stage and the playing stage so given all of that um we have a full day day one tomorrow thursday is the first day for the playing stage as you see here like i said it's going to be in mexico city and we already have some breaking news on the rosters. So I'll go through the rosters and I'll go through matchups for tomorrow's um, slate. But like I said, also my predictions for the play-in stages um, by the end of October 4th, who will advance to the group stage. Um, so that's something I'll talk about from the macro standpoint. So as you can see, playing stages, like I said, will be in Mexico City and then New York City. New York City for group group stage, quarterfinals, and then Atlanta, Georgia 
in the semi uh, four semifinals, which I'll be going to. So if any of you guys who's watching this is going to be going to semifinals uh, in Atlanta, please, please let me know. Um, I'd love to buy you a drink. Um, that would be a fun time just to kind of meet each other and talk about League of Legends or talk about other shit, you know? That'll be fun. And then the finals will be in San Francisco. So, anywho. So, uh, you guys already know this, but, you know, there are teams around the world, including China, Korea, Europe, North America, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Brazil, Japan, go on, um, that make up this tournament. So, for the play-in stage, I will talk about each group. So let's talk about that right now. So that's enough for that stage, uh, for that website. Um, I just want to point out, if you are interested in uh, any updates um, for the tournament and for roster, uh, I highly recommend you follow LOL Esports on Twitter. Um, this is the official handle of Riot Games League of Legends Esports Twitter. <laughs> Um, so as you can see, group stage schedule is already out for October 7th, which is in two weeks. Um, as you see, cloud nine will be playing first, but we don't know the rest of the tournament, uh, the rest of the schedule, who's going to be playing against him at, against them and other stuff. But I just want to point out that it's a good source for that kind of stuff. And Fnatic has a roster update, which I'll talk about here throughout the video. Um, but I just want to point out what group stages look like, uh, uh, what play-in stage looks like here. Um, this is the website that I use um, often to kind of look up the rosters and everything, a uh, little fandom. Um, as you can see, here's group A, group B for the play-in stage. Um, group, group A consists of Beyond Gaming from PCS. Chiefs Esports Club from Oceania, LCO, I believe. Uh, DFM uh, Destination Focus Me from Japan. Evil Geniuses from the USA. And Fnatic from Europe. And then Loud from Brazil. For uh, CB LOL, I believe. Um, and then Group B consists of DRX from Korea. Istanbul Wildcats from Turkey. Isarus from Lat Latin America, I believe. Yeah. And then Mad Lions from Europe. RNG from China and Saigon Buffalo from Vietnam. So you guys are probably familiar with at least half of these teams, I believe. You probably have heard of, let's see, DFM from Japan, because they were in the Worlds Tournament last year. If you played DFS or watched Worlds last year, um, they were in it. They made a big splash by making it out of the group stage. Evil Geniuses from USA, I believe. <laughs> I know. Um. When I say I believe, it's because they say North America, but it's USA and then Canada. Yeah, I mean, Jojo Pion and Vulcan are Canadian, so I get it. And then Fnatic, obviously, you've heard of them. Uh, Evil Genesis, North America, I say that, but they're from the LCS. Um, and then DRX, LCK from LCK, and then Mad Lions from LEC in Europe. And then RNG from China, LPL. Um, and then you probably heard of Saigon Buffalo before if you have been following League of Legends esports scene for a while. Um, Vietnam, unfortunately, has uh, skipped out on most recent tournaments because of COVID. Um, but they are attending this tournament, participating in this tournament. So they're really excited about it. There are a lot of uh, Vietnamese fans who are excited about Saigon like Buffalo's outlook, but let's talk about that here in this video. So tomorrow slate, um, I will talk about here shortly, but I just want to kind of go through the roster and I kind of want to point out, uh, you know, what each team likes to do. Very short, um, hopefully succinct <laughs> summary of what I think um, how I think they will fare um, in the in the group stage and what their strengths and weaknesses are um, just based on my research. So I will do that right now. 
So let's start with pool one, pool two, and then pool three. Okay. So pool one is RNG from China, from LPL. As you guys know, um, RNG is one of the biggest juggernauts um, in the playing stage, to say the least. And then probably in the main tournament, I am 99% sure that RNG will get out of the playing stage um, from group B. Um, as you see, RNG is in group B along with another juggernaut, juggernaut that is DRX, but not as consistent or as strong as RNG in my opinion. Um, but they are in the same group. And I think that is a very interesting uh, dynamic, dynamic because most people will think RNG and DRX will come out of that group B and throughout the playing stage. So we'll just talk about that. But just to kind of focus on RNG's roster, um, if you have played any DFS, you have most likely ran into RNG. Playing RNG, playing Xiaohu, playing Gala, playing Ming, play Wei, breathe, you know, go on. So the engine for RNG, in my opinion, is Xiaohu. RNG won the midseason tournament, midseason invitational, which is a basically like a midseason tournament that happens between the spring split and the summer split. So it's like a tournament in between where top teams from top regions come together and compete against each other. Um, RNG was the representative from the LPL, um, and they play against other top teams from other regions, respectively including T1 um, from DLCK. Uh, RNG was utterly dominant in that mid-season tournament, um, and they won the entire tournament in the mis MSI, at MSI. But then they had a little hangover um, in the summer split after that mid-season tournament. Um, just hangover from winning that, probably, and they just did not play well early in the season, early in the summer split. But they kind of um, got their form together and got their plays together, and they have been playing really well. And they revolve around Xiaohu, in my opinion. I know some people like to focus on Gala because he racks up a lot of kills, including some Penta kills that are exciting to watch and exciting to kind of see, you know, on the paper. Just you know, DFS points wise, the Gala scores a lot. His ceiling is really high because really they like they would like Gala to carry in the late game and rack up a lot of kills and be the strongest guy and do a lot of damage for his team. But in my opinion, in the early game, mid game, I think it revolves around Shahu in the mid lane. Um, Way at jungle, in my opinion, has been a little underwhelming along with Breeze in the top lane. I think the top half of the map, Breathe and Way, uh, have been very underwhelming compared to other LPL teams that are in the tournament, in the world's tournament right now. But Shahu, Gala, Ming, the bottom half of the map is very strong. And I liked Shahu's form throughout the LPL playoffs. Um, I, I think they, you know, I, I mean, they definitely deserve to make it to the world's tournament even though they qualified as the last seed out of China. But they are still, they remain the strongest team in the in this tournament so far, in the playing stage at least, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I fully expect them to really drive the train and kind of, and probably finish undefeated, in my opinion, in Group B, and that's my guess. So I have RNG winning every game in the playing stage. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but I do have some Dark Horse teams that I'll talk about, but I think RNG is going to go undefeated. So any RNG game, I like them, and their kill upside is good as well from the fantasy point standpoint. Um, so I, I like RNG a lot. And that's a boring take because they're so good. They're from probably the best region in the LPL. Um, 
but it is what it is. They're good. And unless they have a huge, huge just breakdown internally within the team, I just do not see them losing a lot of games so that they do not advance to the next stage. So that's RNG, and I'll talk about DRX. Um, DRX is interesting, in my opinion, because I really didn't think they had what it takes to advance um, out of the L LCK playoffs. The qualifiers for the Worlds. But they made a significant change at Jungle throughout the playoffs um, to help them push through the struggles they were going through and make it to the Worlds. Um, Kingen in the top lane is okay. Piosik was the main starter for the regular season, but he was struggling a lot. So the biggest decision the DRX coaching staff has made was starting Juhan, who started over Piosik throughout the playoffs. And Juhan, as you guys know, or some of you guys know, was a starting jungler for PSG Talon um, last season. But he joined DRX as a substitute jungler. And he is a good player. We'll see who starts at jungle. So that's a question mark um, for DFS purposes, um, who to start. But I just want to point out, <clears throat> um, Juhan is a more consistent jungler, in my opinion. Piosik, his ceiling is higher, but he's been inconsistent at times going for objectives that he should not secure or go for which has kind of given up leads um, to uh, their opponents um, in games thus far. So we'll see, uh, you know, which jungler DRX sticks with. And then Zika, in my opinion, has been the best player for DRX this season. Um, especially in the summer split, Zika was lights out. He was the most consistent and best player uh, for DRX throughout the entire season. I love Zika. I love his plays. Um, I loved his form coming into the LPL, I mean, LCK playoffs. Um, so we'll see where that leads them. But I liked um, the mid lane dominance that DRX uh, has shown against their opponents um, through Zika. And then Deft and Barrel, both very experienced um experience thus not making that many mistakes especially game any game costing mistakes so i like that experience going into the world's tournament like this where experience means a lot especially when it comes to the playing stage against some minor league minor region teams that may um gain an early lead, early game advantage, but it, it, there's a good chance that Deft and Barrel kind of, you know, uh, push through the early game struggles and kind of focus on the mid to late game macro game objectives to win the games for them. And I just want to point out that fact, that tendency for DRX has always not worked out um, when they get behind in the early game. So I think against the teams, even minor, league, minor region teams that have a strong early game, I think DRX will struggle against. Just being a an LCK fanatic, by myself, watching the LCK the most am amongst all regions. Um, like I said, DRX tends to struggle against early game teams. Um, so I just want to point that out. And that's probably where I'm going to, have a lot of exposure for fantasy sports and from the betting standpoint um, when DRX goes uh, goes up against early game teams um, that may be underdogs. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but I also want to point out last thing about DRX is that they play slow. They are probably one of the slowest teams, um, lowest combined kills per minute metric. Um, amongst, um, you know, the 12 teams here 
that we have today um, in the playing stage. So I just want to point out that DRX games will probably be slower than most games um, in the playing stage. So, but I do like their outlook. I mean, DRX is still a very good team. Um, they should win against minor region teams. Uh, I do have RNG and DRX still advance, both at advance out of Group B throughout the playing stage. So we'll see where that leads us, but definitely a lot more shaky um, compared to RNG. Um, but, you know, they should still advance out of the group stage, uh, playing stage. Fnatic, um, Europeans, LC LAC's number three seed. Um, I just want to point out before we even talk about who is good and who's not good and what like what they like to focus, you know, revolve around which player. Um, I just want to point this out um, that upset their AD carry, their main AD carry, who tested who had been testing positive for COVID, um, just tested negative, and he flew to Mexico City already, and he will be the starting AD carry for Fnatic tomorrow. So I just want to point that out. As you probably saw on DraftKings or any fantasy sports uh, websites, um, they have a lot of players, uh, you know, um, player options at the AD carry position. But I just want to point out, again, Upset will be starting tomorrow against EG and the Chiefs. Um, but in, but at support position, Heli saying their main support is not going to be starting um, for either game tomorrow, apparently, because he did not fly out um, at the same time as upset. So it says Rux will substitute and he will play at support. So it will be upset at 80 carry, Rux at support for tomorrow's games. And then for Friday's games, it says upset will be starting at 80 carry and then probably Hilly saying starting as support for Friday's game against the FM. So I just want to point that out. If you guys aren't sure about any roster changes and starters, please message me. I'll try to do my best to identify who the most likely starters are. Um, as I have already uh, uh, addressed DRX. I just talked about a few minutes ago. Has a question mark who is going to start at jungle. But for the Fnatic, there's really not a question mark now. That upset will be starting at 80 carry. And then Rux will be starting at support for tomorrow's games, both games tomorrow. So I just want to lay that out there. And that already gives us the edge to kind of identify, you know, where the exposure and the ownership leverage could be. And um, some people may just select whatever they see and based on the points scored and all that statistically. So I just want to point out that in League of Legends DFS, it's very important to get that kind of breaking news to be up to date. I mean, I'll, I'll try to do my best when I know, for, in, for instance, if DRX announces you know, who's starting a jungle. So I'll kind of post that in the Discord channel for True DFS and on my Twitter if I can. So I just wanted to, uh, yeah, share that news with you guys. So where does that put Fnatic um, in terms of their matchups and their outlook? I think Fnatic uh, gets out of Group A as the first um, place team. Um I really like Humanoid um, at mid lane. Fnatic has been playing really well lately, especially throughout the LEC playoffs. I really like them a lot here over any of these teams in Group A, especially against EG, especially against Chiefs and DFM. And then I think that's it. Loud. I don't. I'm, I will talk about them, but I'm not a huge fan of Loud. So. Um, who do they play around usually? I mean, Resort and Humanoid are the two guys that drive that team, um, jungle and mid lane. So I just want to point that out. That's probably going to who I'm going to focus on when I, if I'm playing Fnatic. But, 
you know, upset coming off of the COVID issues. Who knows what kind of condition he'll be under um, and what kind of synergy that he will have with Rux. Um, Hilly saying was his main support, but now Rux starting over Hilly saying, who knows what that synergy is going to look like in the bottom lane. So I would probably more trust Resort and Humanoid and Humanoid has been playing really well um, recently. So I would focus on those two guys for Fnatic. Beyond gaming, um, I'll go a little bit quicker because we still have eight more, nine more teams to talk about. But since some of these teams you're not familiar with, and I was not familiar with until I researched um, and watched some of their games throughout the season, um, I just wanted to share my knowledge and my outlook for those teams. Beyond gaming is an interesting case. Um, PCS, a very strong minor region. Um, compared to, let's say, Brazil or Latin America or Turkey or Oceania. Um, Minji here in the mid lane is a stud, in my opinion. I watched his games, his highlights. I really like him a lot. They like to play around him. They put a lot of resources into Minji in the mid lane. Um, and then Waco and Kino in the bottom lane are... Okay, in my opinion. I think they're a little bit underwhelming, in my opinion. Um, let me see my notes here. Um, like I said, Menji is their best player. Waco and Kino are underwhelming. They are, but they are an early game team. They are. Uh, they like to be uh, explosive in the early game. Um, they're not very good at team fights in the mid to late game. So as long as they do not do well, they're probably going to end up losing I mean, in the early game. They're probably going to end up losing in the mid to late game as well. Um, they're not well known for coming back from a deficit. So against an, a, good, a good early game team, I think they'll struggle to win or even come back from a deficit. So I just want to point that out. Um, I talked about DRX having similar issues um, against a good early game team. So Beyond Gaming is the type of team that likes to focus on early game and put a lot of resources in getting a first blood and first objective. So that's the kind of game that I will kind of focus on. Um, DRX and Beyond Gaming, they're probably not, you know, um, going to play against each other until the qualification round, knockout stage. But I just kind of want to point it out, point out the tendencies um, because they're in different groups. Um, they're not going to play against each other um, until the knockout stage if they advance throughout that tournament. But I just want to point out um, the tendencies and everything as well. Um, so if you are playing Beyond Gaming, um, I would target Minji um, because he is really good, like I said. Um, but I don't really have them that high in the finishes for Group A. I have them one, two, three, four, fifth fifth finish below DFM and below my Dark Horse Chiefs um, that are um, in Group A. So, But they definitely have um, the roster to be the third best team or the fourth best team in Group A. So I just want to point that out. Um, they have a pretty high ceiling, I think, um, just given the competition level um, in their region, but also the, their best player being the mid laner, I think favors them a lot. But like I said, they do not well do, they do not well um, from an early game deficit. So I just want to point that out. Mad Lions, oh man, from the LEC. If you have followed my videos or my contents before, um, I'm a huge El, El Yoya fan, their jungler. Um, he has had an amazing season so far. He is one of the most aggressive and, in my opinion, smartest junglers in the whole world. He's not as elite as some of the biggest junglers in the world, like Tian and Kanavi and Peanut and Owner. Um, but... 
I do think he is in definitely in the A tier, not the S tier, but A tier jungler pool in the tournament and in the play-in stage. I really think he is the best jungler amongst all 12 teams, including over Piosic, over Way. Over Resort and over your favorite USA LCS jungler inspired. So, given all of that, where do I think Mad Lions will finish? I have Mad Lion finishing third in Group B under RNG and DRX, but they have a high ceiling to finish. As high as first, in my opinion, over RNG and DRX, but as low as second to the last place in Group B because they are one of the most frustrating teams to watch sometimes when they just crumble and implode internally within the team. I have seen that happen a lot. But with Niski in the mid lane and with the type of experience, with the level of experience that they have on the team now with several years of Worlds Tournament under their belt for most of these players, I really like Mil Mad Lion's chances to finish in the top three of their group in the playing stage. Like I said, they play around El Yoya's jungle dominance, but Niski played really well in the summer split, and I believe he won a player of the year, a player of the split, split player of the year, or sorry, player of the split, I believe. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but he definitely won something for being a really good player. <laughs> in the summer split. So I would have to give my focus in the jungle mid synergy again. And in the current meta, as mentioned before, a jungler, having a good jungler gives you or yeah, gives you a big boost in winning your games for the team. Um, I think the jungler and the AD carry position are the two most important positions in the current meta. And Elioya and Unforgiven are both good. Elioya is great. Unforgiven is good. And so I like their chances to finish in top top three of the group B. Evil Geniuses from LCS. They had a roster swap as well. Not just for the Worlds, but for the LCS playoffs. At a carry, Danny is not even traveling with the team. They are starting Kaori at a carry, who is not the worst substitute at a carry, but he did start for EG in the LCS playoffs because Danny is having some personal issues that he decided to take some time off from participating um, in League of Legends tournaments. So that leads to Kaori subbing in and having played in the LCS playoffs, as mentioned. Um, he has had decent synergy with his teammates. Um, I think he'll do okay. He is not a scrub. He has experience, not as experienced as Danny or high ceiling like Danny, but Kaori can hold his side of the bargain. I like him to fare decently with his teammates for EG. Now, who does EG like to play around? That's a good question because they used to do that with Danny in the late game or in the mid to late game that Danny would like to carry his team 
and put a lot of resources into Danny. But now with Kawori at 80 carry, that dynamic has shifted a little bit. I think they still like to play around their 80 carries. But Kawori, not as good as Danny. In my opinion, I think Impact and Jojo Pyun and Inspired would probably try to carry more. Um, at least that's what I've seen with Kaori at A to carry. I just want to point out that Impact is probably one of the top, like best top laners in this playing stage. Um, I know he is also very experienced, but in the top lane, I think that experience comes definitely more handy than any other lane um, in the current meta because just, you know, the weak uh, champion pool for the top lane, but also the changes that they made to the teleport summoner spell um, where top laners cannot participate in team fights by teleporting, you know, onto a ward or a minion because they've changed it so that they can only teleport onto an ally turret. So that kind of limits top laner players' options to navigate around the map. So I just want to point that out because the top laner's significance, especially in the early game, has been diminished by the change on the spell. So I just want to point out that with experience and with more consistency and the lane dominance, um, I think it's more than, you know, more imperative than ever to hold the top lane on your own. And Impact is very well known for doing that. So I just want to point that out because not many other teams have that luxury like EG does. So I just want to point that out for Impact and then Inspired for the EG jungling position has been really, really good in the LCS. I don't know how he's going to fare against other top junglers in this group in, uh, playing stage, such as El Yoya. Um, but he doesn't have to worry about that because EG is not in Mad Lions group until the knockout stage. But EG will be playing against Steel. And Resork. Resork will be an interesting matchup there. And Husha for Beyond Gaming is pretty good. So we'll see what happens there. But Jojo Pion, um, but but just to kind of finish my point on the jungling spot, Inspired is good. Um, but I don't think he's elite. So we'll see what happens there. But I like his chances against some minor region teams like Beyond Gaming. But who's just not bad. So we'll see where that leads us. But like I said, a jungler, having a good jungler on, on your team is very important in the current meta. And last thing I'll say about EG is their mid laner, Jojo Pyun. Um, he's the most vocal and animated uh, player on that team. He has been backing up his talk um, with his plays mostly. <laughs> I like his most recent champion pool that I've seen out of the LCS playoffs for the summer split, but he has also shown that he can tilt quite easily. Um, he is very emotional, um, which has been causing him to be a little more inconsistent than any other mid laner that I've seen really any other mid laner so depends on how depends on what kind of form and what kind of emotional state that Jojo Pion is under i think that's going to dictate how eg is going to do throughout the playing stage which kind of sounds crazy when you first hear it but really i've seen the lcs the entire spring and summer split. And EG goes 
as Jojo Penn goes. Danny was the most consistent player along with Impact for EG. So I'm not too worried about that. And we'll see how Kaori fares, but he is not the type of player who will throw games and all that as well. More than likely, Kaori and Vulcan are going to farm and not make game-costing mistakes in the bottom lane. So I really do think it's going to come down to Jojo Pion in the mid lane. And I think against great mid laners, I think he's going to struggle. And I think he's going to try to do too much in the mid to late game. And I think that's going to be the key for EG's success in this tournament. Saigon Buffalo um, is another team in this tournament. I really like them a lot. Um, I have them finish pretty high. Um, let me see where I have them. Yeah, I have them finish fourth, right below Mad Lions in Group B. I really like them a lot. Like I said, Bean J is their best player, their jungler. And as mentioned in the current meta, Bean J being the best jungler or being the best player for that team at jungle position gives them a very good chance to win their games on any given matchup. Um, I like Shogun and Taki in the bottom lane as well. Um, I think it's going to go Bean J and then Shogun and Taki um, as their best players. So they have a good jungler. They have a good A to carry. What more do you need, right? So I like their chances a lot in Group B against RNG, DRX, and Mad Lions. It's going to be very hard and very tough to get out of there, but I, th I like them to upset any, any one of those top three teams that I just mentioned um, any given day, any given matchup, in a best of one, they can do it. I love BJ's aggressive jungling tendencies, their style, and his style is very similar to El Yoya, so I just want to point that out. Um, that's going to be a treat when you watch Saigon Buffalo versus Mad Lions. Um, I think they either one of them is going to finish third or fourth, um, back and forth. So we'll see what happens there. And they play fast too, so we'll see. Um, and detonation to focus me is DFM for from Japan, um, from LJL. I just want to point out that they have Evi, Steel, and Utapon coming back from last year's Worlds. So they have three of the five starters from last season and last season's Worlds tournament. So they have tremendous experience um, from last year, and they got out of the group stage, like I mentioned. So I like them to continue their success. Um, and they're in a group in the group with Fnatic and EG. But um, I have a decent outlook as long as the other opponents don't have a strong jungling player. Um, I think Steel has been a very underwhelming um, in their region. I actually think their strengths have been in the bottom lane with Utapon and Harp adapting to the current meta, playing uh, strong AD carries that are in the meta, um, but also supports that have Enchanter as the Masters. I don't want to, at Mastery, I don't want to get into the details and all that, but I just want to make sure that these teams adapt to what the current meta and current strengths are and strong champions are. So I just want to point that out, that DFM's bottom lane has been doing that. That gives me some confidence that they're actually they actually know what's going on instead of sticking to what has worked before and not maybe as strong as it used to be. Um, some teams with old players have tendencies to do that. They like to go back to their comfort comfort picks, but that has its limits. 
to win the whole thing, to win the whole tournament, you kind of have to go with the flow and you have to play, you know, the champions and the strategies that favor you or give you the best chance to win against other opponents. So having said all of that, um, their new mid laner, Yaha Rong, he, I believe, came from Fred Brion in the LCK. Um, he's a very decent mid laner, but in the LJL, I've watched him play, and he's in decent form. Um, like I said, him, the bottom lane, have been really good in their region, but Evie and Steel have been underwhelming. Um, Steel likes to play a little more supportive style at jungle, which is not, which does not bode well with the current meta. You want the junglers to carry their teams, especially through the early game, but Steel is not that type of guy. And that's why I mentioned, I think the FM will struggle against teams with strong junglers. Um, so for example, when they go up against, let's say, EG with Inspired or Fnatic with Resort, I think the FM will struggle um, unless their bottom lane or the mid lane ends up carrying that team, which can happen, but more than likely early game is going to be dictated by the jungler and his position around the map, creating map pressure, which makes the game very easy um, for other teammates in other lanes. So I just want to point that out. I think DFM will struggle against top teams with top junglers. So I just want to point that out, um, that DFM will most likely finish the bottom half of that group A. So I have them finish fourth in group A. But if you are focusing on DFM players, like I said, I would focus on the bottom half, Yaharong, Yutapan, and Harp as their main carries. Chiefs Esports Club from the LCO, I believe, Oceania, is going to be a very, very interesting team. They are my dark horse of the tournament. They have gone undefeated in their region. Sounds like I'm hyping them up, but the hype is already there um, in some of the places that I've read and I've watched. Um, but I think it is justified. Um, they have pretty good players, um, especially in the bottom lane. And I'm not talking about their AD carry. I'm actually talking about their support. Ella Dork at support. Is a very good player. I really like him a lot. Um, he plays a mixture of engage slash mage, like enchanter, support champions. So really, he can play anything as long as, depending on what the team needs, what the team composition is. And he has never disappointed in any of the games that I've watched. Like he carries as support. And that is very rare in the current meta, especially. And especially when he plays engage champions, I like him a lot and their chances to win. And that also naturally helps raise at AD carry his teammate to play well. Um, so I do think their bottom lane is pretty good. Um, but in addition to that, Arthur, who came over from Hanwha Life this past off season, um, he's been lights out. Like he's he's probably the lead reason why they have tremendous metrics, especially in the early game, for Arthur to dominate the way that he did in the LCO. Um, we'll see what happens here against other top junglers in this tournament, but I like their chances against Fnatic, against Evil Geniuses, 
against DFM with a weak jungler in steel. I like Arthur and Chiefs to upset any one of those teams that are projected to finish higher than them. So they are my dark horse team of the play and stage. We'll see how that, where that's going to, you know, get me. But I just want to point that out. Arthur is good and their bottom lane is good as well. Their mid lane tally plays whatever the team needs as well. Um, mainly Ari and Talia, I believe that I saw him play, but he can also play more of a utility role because Arthur can definitely carry as a jungler. And then Tapoon, you know, you probably have heard of him before. If you haven't, he used to play for Immortal Academy um, in the um, in the LCS. Um, I just want to point that out. Um, he tried to play in the LCS quite a bit, but, you know, it is what it is. It hasn't worked out, but he's a decent player, and I'm not, like I said, top laner. As long as they can hold their own in the laning phase, I think he will do just fine. In the team fights, though, I like him and his uh, engages for his team a lot, especially when he plays Gnar, a champion that can change the game, change team fights. So I like his Gnar a lot and his tanky champions that he plays in, uh, plays with. Um, so like I said, Chiefs are my dark horse pick of the playing stage. Um, I have them finish third above the FM. And I think the main difference between those two teams is the jungler and Arthur versus Steel. So three teams left. I'll go a little bit quicker. Istanbul Wildcats, IW from Turkey. Um, I have them finish last. No, second to the last in Group B. I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think they are probably one of they, they were probably the hardest team to read and kind of gauge what level they're at compared to other teams. I think Holy Phoenix has the faker status, the legendary status in Turkey. Um, Esports scene, he's really old compared to comparatively. Um, I think he's a decent player. I think his prime has long been gone, but he's still there. And he's still producing for his team. Um, along with Farfetch, I think they'll do okay, but their ceiling is very limited and capped. Um, I think their main AD, uh, main carry is Saren in the mid lane. So if you are playing any Istanbul Wildcats, I would focus on Saren and then Holy Phoenix. Um, I think Ferret is probably one of the most underwhelming junglers in uh, the playing stage. Like I said, I have them um, I have them finish second to the last in Group B. Um, and Saren, like I said, has carried his team in the playoffs, so I would focus him if you are playing Istanbul Wildcat players. Um, Ferret is very early game focus, so against Elite junglers like RNG, DRX, and Mad Lions, and Saigon Buffalo. I just feel like his early game dominance in jungle will be neutralized, if not be a disadvantage um, against those top teams with top junglers, in my opinion. So I don't really like their outlook, but, you know, it is what it is. That also means their ownership will be probably be very low. Israus from Latin America. I'm sorry, but they are the worst team in the entire world's tournament. So I will not go that deep on them. But if you were to just go ape shit crazy and pick them for a long shot, um, for fantasy sports, 
Um, I would definitely go with Seiya in the mid lane um, to carry that team. I think if they win, Seiya will probably be the highest score on that team. But I just don't like their outlook because when I watched their jungler and their AD carry, they were probably the two of the worst players at those positions, respectively. Um, especially struggling in the playoffs in the Latin America playoffs um, against opponents. They went through Seiya, um, not through their jungler or their AD carry. I know they have ADD and Jelly top lane support position, but I'm not entirely confident that they can carry their entire team in those lanes. It's going to have to come from jungling or A to carry, and neither of them is very strong for that team and going up against players at those positions that are much higher level than they are. I just don't like their outlook for the tournament. Last team I'll talk about is Loud from Brazil, from CBLOL. Um, you you guys probably have heard of some of these players. Ten owns has been there forever in the uh, CBLOL business. Um, and CEOs has been playing there as well quite a bit. Um, I have them finish last, which may be su some, somewhat, somewhat surprising to some of you guys. But the way that they like to play in the CB lull, I think this fate that does them um this favor. Um I like Croc quite a bit in the jungle, but the way that they like to play is just constantly engage in skirmish. And I think that's gonna backfire against them in this tournament. Um I think they're a decent early game team, just like any CB LOL team, um, as long as they have an early game lead, they have a good chance to win. But if they are behind and have an early game deficit, 99% of the times that I've watched, they're going to lose. They're not a good mid to late game team. They're not a team that is most likely or that is likely going to come back from behind. So against... Other teams that have strong or like to neutralize the early game advantage against Loud, um, I think Team Loud is going to struggle against that, um, especially them being in um, the group that they're in against Fnatic, early uh, Evil Geniuses with strong junglers. And Chiefs, like I said, um, Arthur is a good jungler. I just feel like Loud is going to struggle against those teams. And DFM, we'll see what happens there. Um, I think definitely Loud can beat them, has a potential for upset there. Um, I think BYG, Beyond Gaming, is okay. Um, Husha has been okay. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But I just feel like their win conditions are very limited for Team Loud. And that's why I have them finish last in Group A. So I know that's taken a while, but I hope you guys enjoyed the roster overview of the play-in stage. I know that's a lot, so I hope you guys come back to this video and the future dates um, to kind of, you know, to kind of focus on who is good and what their tendencies are. Um, I'm definitely gonna do that to kind of kind of gauge as to what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and kind of compare the two teams as to what's gonna happen, most likely. But I just want to point out um each team's roster and their strengths because some of those teams we're not really entirely familiar with. Um and for tomorrow's slate, I will go into that real quick. Um, it will take me less than five minutes to talk about them. Um, I think it's really based on the matchups that I just talked about, but also based on the rosters that I just talked about. So Mad Lions versus Isaris is the first matchup. And like I said, I have Isaris 
finished last in Group B, and Mad Lions finished third in Group B. I think there's a huge gap at Jungle and huge gap at AD Carry as well. Like I said, I like Mad Lions to win this matchup pretty handedly. And then Fnatic versus Evil Geniuses. I don't know when these odds came out. Um, I think these odds kind of take into account all the roster changes that both teams had to make. Obviously, for Fnatic, it has been confirmed that upset will start at start at AD Carry, and Rux will start at support. Now, those guys have not really played together recently, and I don't know what kind of synergy that they would have um, in the competitive scenes. I'm sure they have been scrimming, uh, you know, participating in a lot of scrimmages against other teams together in the bottom lane, but it's not going to be the same, um, you know, going up against, you know, the LCS juggernaut that is evil geniuses. That has also had to go through the roster change at A to carry position. Kaori will be starting over Danny, uh, with Danny suffering from some personal issues. Um, Kaori, like I said, has some games under his belt, um, as he has played with them, um, as AD Carey starter, uh, in the LC LCS playoffs. Um, but I just want to point that out because really I liked Fnatic's form much better than Evil Geniuses. But that was with Upset and Hillisang in the bottom lane. But I still do think um, Fnatic should win this matchup. Um, but it's going to be a close one. Um, I think most people will go Fnatic. I think Fnatic's ownership will be much higher compared to Evil Geniuses. So that naturally makes me select Evil Geniuses <laughs> for you know leverage purposes. But um, I really think it's a coin flip. But if I have to pick... I have to pick Fnatic because of the better jungler, in my opinion, in Resort um, over Inspired for Evil Geniuses, but mainly for the mid lane uh, matchup began, uh, between Humanoid versus Jojo Pyeon. Like I said, Jojo Pyeon can be quite inconsistent um, and has been known to implode and kind of int if the game goes sour, a game goes south um, in the early game. So I like Fnatic to win that matchup um, as my prediction. And then Beyond Gaming versus Loud. Um, I may be way off with this, but I like Beyond Gaming over Team Loud here today or tomorrow. Um, like I said, Team Loud, they're a decent early game team, but if they don't have an early game lead, they will struggle. They're not going to be the team that farms and then kind of phases out until the late game to kind of pulls off pull, to pull off an upset. They need to be disciplined, and they're not the most disciplined team in the tournament, but beyond gaming... Like I said, uh, their mid lane is really good, Minji. Um, their bottom lane has been a little bit underwhelming, but they are also a good early game early game team. And I prefer Beyond Gaming's jungler over Team Loud's jungler, and that's going to be the difference maker, I think, even though both teams tend to favor the early game advantages. I like Beyond Gaming's win conditions, a little more than Team Loud's chances. So I'll have to go with Beyond Gaming to win. Mad Lions versus Istanbul Wildcats. Um, for the similar reasons that I mentioned here up here against Isarus over uh, or versus Mad Lions, I think Mad Lions should roll through Istanbul Wildcats. Um, but like I said, Mad Lions has shown some inconsistencies as well um, throughout the LDC season and splits and playoffs. Um, so Istanbul Wildcats could pull this off if they hit everything on their cell on cylinders, but with Elioia um, at jungle, 
Um, I just feel like it's not going to fare well against its number Wildcats chances. Um, I like Mad Lions jungling and mid lane advantages. Um, I know Saren for Wildcats has played well in the playoffs, but going up against Niski, I think that's going to be a struggle. Um, and then Ferret, their jungler, like I said, early game focus, but going up against El Yoya, one of the best junglers in this stage of the world's tournament. I like Bad Lions' chances very much to win this matchup. So, the, you know, as you probably have noticed, I have Mad Lions go 2-0 tomorrow, winning against Isarus and Istanbul Wildcats. As the odds indicate, I like Mad Lions' chances, um, but we'll see what happens. Fnatic against Chiefs. This is the interest, most interesting matchup, in my opinion. I think Fnatic having um, the bottom lane with Rux at support, a little bit different dynamics um, going up against Chiefs that were undefeated in their region and my dark horse of the tournament. I'm definitely going to have some exposure to Chiefs over Fnatic. I mean, Fnatic should win this matchup. I have them finish first in their group, but I think Chiefs definitely have what it takes to be able to pull this off. Um, Fnatic's win conditions, they have more win conditions compared to Chiefs. I think Chiefs will have to gain an early game advantage, and Arthur, the jungler for Chiefs, can do that. Um, I think he is a very good jungler, at least has shown to be, at least this season. So we'll see what happens there. But I think this is going to be a very high kill matchup to target, in my opinion, uh, for for the matchup. But if I have to guess, if I have to predict, I'm going to predict Fnatic to win. But I'm definitely going to have some exposure to Chiefs because they have the personnel and the style of play to upset one of these top teams tomorrow or in the next couple of days. I have three more matchups to talk about. Um, very exciting. DFM versus Loud. Loud, I have them finish last, like I said, in the group. DFM, I think they'll struggle against teams with good junglers. Um, but I don't think Team Loud is one of those teams. DFM um, has a really good bottom lane, and I think that's going to favor them a lot in this matchup. Over Team Loud. Um, like I said, Team Loud is an early game team with no, without any early game lead. They're probably going to lose. And I like the FM to neutralize that early game advantages against Loud. So I do have DFM winning that matchup. And Team Loud naturally has tendencies to produce high kill upside. So I do think that gives a little boost to DFM's kill upside. And as the as the match overall as a whole, um, I like the kill upside as well. Second Buffalo, like I said, I'm high on them compared to Istanbul Wildcats. Um, I like Saigon Buffalo's jungler, BJ, and their bottom lane, Shogun and Taki. Um, I think they're going to do really well against Istanbul Wildcats. I think Istanbul Wildcats, if they win, it's going to be through early game advantage over uh, with Ferret and Jungle and then Saren in the mid lane. But like I said, being Jay, being a very good jungler, probably a better jungler than Ferret, I like Saigon Buffalo's chances to win that matchup. Last matchup of the day is the marquee matchup of the day between the LCK representative and DRX and then LPL representative in RNG. Um, I have RNG winning this matchup. I think DRX is good, but not as good as RNG. I think DRX's strength, like I said, has been in the mid lane with Zika, but going up against the experienced and informed Xiaohu for RNG, I think that 
advantage for DRX will be neutralized. And who knows who's going to start at DRX uh, jungle position. But I think RNG overall is a better team. And unless DRX hits everything on the cylinders, which they can at times, and their upside is good, but I like RNG's form over DRX's form at the moment. So I'm going to have to go RNG in this matchup. So, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Like I said, I have a few spots for potential upsets that I see that I've talked about. Um, so if you missed it, please rewind and check it out. Otherwise, I know this was a very long video, but I just want to point out everything that I've researched that I wanted to share with you guys. So in the future videos, I'll probably just talk about each mat each day's, uh, you know, that day's slate and that day's matchups. But if you are inter interested in listening to what each team's strengths and weaknesses are and what their outlooks are and what my, and what my predictions are for uh, the places uh, within the groups, respectively, um, you can always refer to this video. Um, I think that will be the way to go. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, otherwise, like I said, this video, um, thank you. First of all, thank you for watching this video. Um, this video was sponsored by, by TrueDFS. Um, I will be active in their Discord server and the League of Legends channel to share any nuggets um, once the starter confirmation comes out. And if you guys have any questions or just want to chat League of Legends or DFS, I'm happy to do that at DFS Chan on Twitter, YouTube, Discord. It was nice talking to you guys. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Good luck out there. And it is League of Legends World time. See ya. Bye-bye.